Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing the content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so, what's the difference between, well, Mexican cigarettes and American cigarettes. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about seven main differences in my personal opinion between, well, Mexican cigarettes and American cigarettes. And I'm gonna be smoking a little bit of, well, a Paul Mall Tokyo Midnight flavored cigarette from Mexico, you know what I'm saying? I do think without further ado though, before I go ahead and get one of these cigarettes out, I'm gonna go ahead and put these packs in my backpack right here so they don't blow away because it is quite windy today, you know what I'm saying? And I do think without further ado though, I'm gonna go ahead and done that. I'm gonna go ahead and get one of these cigarettes out. Go ahead and just pop the pop capsule real quick so I can go ahead and smoke myself a little bit of a nice cherry flavored cigarette, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and get it up and go ahead and start talking about well what the seven main differences between well mexican cigarettes and american cigarettes actually are you know what i'm saying i do think without further ado though let's go ahead and get this lit up and let's go ahead and start talking about well the topic of this video yes sir yes sir you know what i'm saying, what I'm saying. So the seven main differences in my personal opinion at least are not really organized in any sort of particular order or anything like that kind of thing I just sort of organized them in sort of like a way that I felt like flowed pretty well and everything like that kind of thing. And as such, well, the first main reason, the first main difference between, well, Mexican cigarettes and American cigarettes, simply put, is quality in my personal opinion. Now, don't get me wrong. The cigarettes aren't built particularly bad quality or anything like that kind of thing, nor are the packs. The packs are pretty good quality as well. What it comes down to is the quality of the tobacco itself, which in my personal opinion at least seems to be a little bit lower. Anytime I'm not smoking a flavored cigarette or a menthol cigarette here or something like that kind of thing, I get sort of a bad chemically taste in my mouth kind of thing, especially if I'm really, really, really trying to like analyze the taste and everything like that kind of thing. I get sort of a bad chemically taste in my mouth. And honestly, it isn't really the most enjoyable thing in the world. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not nearly as bad as like the Maverick Reds or something like that kind of thing. That is just absolutely, absolutely terrible. I don't know whether it's actually the tobacco quality or whether it's just the chemicals they're just putting in the cigarettes and everything like that kind of thing or for all i know it could literally just be the paper quality and with flavored cigarettes and with menthol cigarettes that taste is just covered up by well the menthol and the flavor and everything like that kind of thing i really have no clue but nonetheless they just taste like a little bit lower quality and everything like that kind of thing which honestly is a little bit of a complaint to my behalf but what i didn't mention is that honestly I have indeed been smoking a decent amount of like full flavored Mexican cigarettes and everything like that kind of thing. And honestly, don't get me wrong on like the first, second, third cigarettes of the pack and everything like that kind of thing. I can definitely taste a lot of that sort of chemically taste and everything like that kind of thing. After that, as long as I'm not like trying to pay attention to the taste too much or anything like that kind of thing, it really does not taste all that bad. It's not like with Mavericks where that's all you can taste kind of thing. You can still get a very nice tobacco taste in there, especially if you just try to ignore that sort of chemically taste and everything like that kind of thing. It's really not the biggest deal in the world. But that is the first main difference in my personal opinion. I'm going to go and take a hit of this real quick, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. <sighs> Two, actually. <sighs> and just go in ashes real quick. So what is the second main difference in my personal opinion? So the second main difference in my personal opinion, at least, is, a, is, is well flavored cigarettes it's it's pretty it's 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 pretty self-explanatory i gotta play on sale well america doesn't have flavored cigarettes and mexico does that is a huge super significant difference between well mexican cigarettes and well american cigarettes because well we don't have flavored cigarettes in america besides like flavored cigarellos and flavored filtered cigars and everything like that kind of thing but they're not technically cigarettes mexico on the other hand has all of it i gotta play on so they have flavored cigars they have flavored uh cigarellos kind of thing they have flavored cigarettes and everything like that kind of thing they have everything and that really is is a huge difference from, well, Mexican cigarettes to the, well, cigarettes in the United States and everything like that kind of thing. That is a huge difference. That is honestly pretty self-explanatory, you know what I'm saying? So moving on to the next page of my little notebook where I have some notes written down and everything like that kind of thing so I don't forget what I'm going to say. Number three, I would definitely have to say the taste of the cigarettes overall, besides that sort of chemically sort of bad, not really great taste and everything like that kind of thing, I definitely have to say the full flavored cigarettes that I've tried here tend to not really be nearly as sweet as the cigarettes in the United States. Even the Marlboro Reds in the United States are more sweet than the Marlboro Reds here kind of thing which is honestly a little bit crazy. And honestly, I really haven't tried many cigarettes besides flavored cigarettes or menthol cigarettes, which have anywhere near any sort of like sweet tinge to them or anything like that kind of thing. This is a pretty sweet cigarette, I ain't gonna lie. But any like tobacco flavored or just normal flavored, uh, full flavored sort of uh, tobacco cigarette or something like that kind of thing, it's mainly just like sort of a sour, sort of bitter taste kind of thing, not really 
a sweet taste. But honestly, now that I've been here for a while kind of thing, I've honestly started to enjoy that sort of sour taste a lot more. No, don't get me wrong though, don't get me wrong though. I really, really, really do still like myself a good sweet tobacco cigarette, you know what I'm saying? But honestly, the sour taste has kind of grown on me. And honestly, I ain't really complaining too much, but that certainly is a very, very significant difference because, well, a lot of full flavored tobacco cigarettes in the United States are indeed at least a little bit sweet, that is for sure. Whereas the cigarettes here, the Pharaohs I've tried, the Marlboro Reds I've tried, the Chesterfield Oranges that I've tried, the LM Red Labels that I've tried, none of those have really had much of a sweet tinge at all. I think the sweetest of them all was probably the Chesterfield Oranges, and that's still, like, compared to cigarettes in the United States, that is still absolutely, absolutely nothing, you know what I'm saying? But moving on to number four. Number four is, well, there that there are more filter designs. This is pretty self-explanatory as well. Cigarettes in the United States tend not to really have a lot of filter designs, unless I'm talking about about while well, the Dunhill fine cut whites, those do have filter designs, you know what I'm saying? And there certainly are minor filter designs, don't get me wrong, Newport Boost, Camel Crush, etc might have like a little pop capsule on this or something like that kind of thing. But on a normal full flavored tobacco cigarette or just on a normal menthol non-pop capsule cigarette or something like that kind of thing, typically speaking at least, there really are no designs. But almost every single cigarette I've tried here has a design. The only cigarette I've tried so far, I want to say that doesn't have a design on it, was the Pharaoh's filtered cigarette. I want to say that was the only cigarette I've tried so far here where the filter did not have some sort of distinct design. The Chesterfield Oranges was also pretty simple, you know what I'm saying? But it also did say Filtro Firm on it and everything like that kind of thing, which is honestly a little bit wild. And while cigarettes in the United States, they certainly do say like the brand and everything like that kind of thing on the filter every once in a while. But other than that, there's not really much going on. It's certainly not nearly as intricate as like a design like this or something like that. So on Honestly, that really is a super, super significant difference and honestly something that I'm not complaining about at all. I like to see the different filter designs and everything like that kind of thing, especially as somebody who is not used to it. It is just so cool to see, you know what I'm saying? So certainly no complaints on my behalf. And I ain't gonna lie though, this cigarette is pretty good, you know what I'm saying? Certainly no complaints on my behalf, that is for sure. But number five is that, uh, I'm having trouble reading my own handwriting, I could have it because I forgot what number five is. So number five is, well, pretty self-explanatory, I could have so it is the warning labels. Some of them are pretty gory, some of them aren't, you know what I'm saying? But in the United States, we have no warning labels besides the Surgeon General warning on the side where this would be right here, I could have so or actually it is on this side. I'm not exactly sure I could have so I really cannot remember. But all we have is a warning, currently speaking, in the United States, at least I know they're trying to change this and everything like that kind of thing. All we have in the United States right now, at least, is, well, the Surgeon General warning. That's all we have as a warning label in the United States, whereas here in Mexico, it is required that 30% of the front of the pack is taken up by a warning label, 100% of one of the actual sides of the cigarette pack, 100% of the back of the cigarette pack, all of that has to be covered by a warning label by law, I get a blind cell, which honestly is just a huge difference from the United States, and honestly something that is pretty interesting. I could blast. I'm glad that the front is not just blank cigarette packaging and everything like that kind of thing. That is for sure. Certainly no complaints on my behalf, but it certainly is still a huge difference between, well, cigarettes here in Mexico and cigarettes in the United States. That is for sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, and I'm going to go ahead and take another hit of my cigarette real quick. I will admit this thing, this cigarette, this Palm Mall Tokyo Midnight is certainly pretty good. I do think without further ado, I'm going to go and pop this pop capsule as well. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and get myself a little bit more of a sweet menthol taste. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Delicious. You know what I'm saying? Delicious. No complaints on my behalf, but Moving on to number six, you know what I'm saying? We're almost done with the entire list. And number six is something that is not really super major. It's something that's a little bit more minor, but still super, super significant nonetheless. In my personal opinion, at least from what I can tell, there are less brands overall in Mexico granted Take what I say with a grain of salt for this one, at least kind of thing, for this uh, sort of difference, uh, at least kind of thing. I'm getting my words all jumbled up just a little bit, but I hope you guys know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. But there are less brands, but more brand varieties in my personal opinion, at least, which I said, take this with a grain of salt. The only places I've really bought my cigarettes at are like Super Q's, Circle K's, uh, Oxos, and stuff like that kind of thing. I'm sure if I actually went to a tobacconist, a tobacconist and everything like that kind of thing, I'm sure I might see more brands and more varieties and everything like that kind of thing. And definitely in some grocery stores, I see other brands that I don't see in Oxo and stuff like that. But here at least, it definitely there definitely seems to be a lot less brands, but more brand varieties. And those brand varieties are very much like in, in the United States, we have like Marlboro and Camel, which have like a ton of varieties and everything like that kind of thing. And then there's like Winston, American Spirit. American Spirit has a lot of varieties as well. I could play on stuff. But like Winston, they really just have like five main varieties and everything like that kind of thing. And most cigarette brands in the United States, at least, seem to have just like five main, the five, five main Oh man, I'm getting my words all jumbled up with this one, you know what I'm saying? Five main varieties and everything like that kind of thing, whereas every single cigarette brand here seems to have like 
20 different varieties or something like that kind of thing. There's just so many different varieties and honestly it is really, really interesting, that is for sure. But I do think without further ado, before I go ahead and cover the last difference in my personal opinion at least, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this cigarette right here and go ahead and well, finish off the video after I tell you guys what the last final difference is. Yes sir, yes sir, and I'm saying I'm saying. Alrighty, so what is the final difference between, well, Mexican and American cigarettes? And honestly, this is probably the biggest difference in my personal opinion, at least. And it's pretty simple. Price point. In the United States, don't get me wrong, there are cheap cigarettes. In my state, the price average for a pack of Marlboro Reds right now is about $6.50. Here in Mexico, it's about mm, 70 pesos, so it's about three dollars and fifty cents so it's three dollars less than in my state and don't get me wrong you can get three dollar and fifty cents cigarettes three dollars and fifty cents cigarettes in my state you can do that but they're not going to be the best cigarettes in the world and they're certainly not going to be name brand they're not going to be marlboros that is for sure and marlboros here are the most expensive cigarettes you can buy the marlboro reds i bought i want to say were the most expensive cigarettes that i've bought here and the kent's as well kind of thing those were super expensive as well whereas in my state like the most expensive cigarettes you can buy are like nine ten ten dollars and fifty cents eleven dollars kind of thing those are the most expensive cigarettes you can buy in my state and everywhere else in the United States kind of thing, my state is super cheap. As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, kind of think you guys live in New York, Maine, up north kind of thing in California. Cigarettes are super, super expensive, upwards of like $15 a pack in some areas, which is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely insane. And really, in my personal opinion, at least, this is really the most significant difference between, well, Mexican cigarettes and American cigarettes being, well, the price point. I got to blame. So the price point is just insanely lower and certainly no complaints on my behalf about that. It's so much lower and it's honestly so nice to be able to walk into like an OXO or something like that kind of thing. And I just, no, no joke, like the other day kind of thing, I'm stocking up for my trip back and everything like that kind of thing. I walked into OXO with a $500 bill in my hand, grabbed a mon, uh, gr with a $500 bill, with a 500 peso bill in my hand, grabbed a monster and I walked over to the counter and no joke, I I think I got like six packs of cigarettes for, I want to say about 400 pesos plus a monster, 400 pesos, six packs of cigarettes. Don't get me wrong. Not all of them were super expensive, but six packs of cigarettes plus a monster for 400 pesos, 400 pesos is about, I want to say like, so I want to, I want to say that's about like $16. So I got six packs of cigarettes and a monster. And the monster is like 40 pesos, which is like as much as a cigarette pack in all honesty kind of thing. The monsters here are, are not really any cheaper than in the United States, but $16 for six packs of cigarettes and a monster. That really is the most significant difference in my personal opinion. And honestly, certainly no complaints on my behalf. It has made the whole experience of being in Mexico and everything like that kind of thing so much fun, especially with just everything, everything being so much cheaper kind of thing. I love it. I got to blast it. I love it. But those are the seven main differences between, well, Mexican cigarettes and American cigarettes in my personal opinion, at least. Let me know if you guys have tried both, well, Mexican cigarettes and American cigarettes. Am I right? Am I wrong? Or let me know if you guys have any other significant differences in y'all's opinion. I certainly am very, very curious to find out what you guys think and what you guys have to say about, well, this video, you know what I'm saying? But I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching my opinion on, well, the differences between, well, Mexican and American cigarettes. And if you guys have enjoyed watching this video, of course, please make sure to, well, like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, my PO box, my second channel, all in the description down below. You know what I'm saying? Go check it all out. And as said, of course, please make sure to like and subscribe for more content. But until the next one, y'all, stay safe and peace and have a great one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying?